And I said, uh, my father, I must agree with you. There is no Allah, and there is no uh, life that goes on forever. There is no life after death. But, uh, but you know, the, the, the point is, you must spend your wealth, you must spend your money, and make the whole world as paradise should be. You must spend your wealth and make the whole world like Janat al -Nain. And my father answered me, and he said, if the people want to work, if those who don't have anything want to work, they may work. So don't put this responsibility on me. And I answered my father, and I said, yes, it may be true that some are lazy, some of the people in the world who have nothing are lazy and aren't working for it, but others are in such a position where it's impossible for them to have an opportunity. And it's your responsibility to make the opportunity for them. Since you've structured, you and those like you, have structured society in such a way that some have absolutely no opportunity to improve their condition. And my father said, the way you're talking to me, it's a Marxist type of conversation. Maybe you are contaminated with communism. Exactly. Yes. And, he, and, he, and he told me, uh, and I said to him, I said, well, I said, the people who think like you in the world and the people who think like me, they're struggling this very moment with the Kalashnikov Russian assault rifle and the M16. Right. And I said, also, between you and I, there is conflict. Right. And he said, but why then do you eat my food in my house? You are a hypocrite. You are a Munafik. Because you think like this, yet you eat my food. And I said, yes. I said, you are correct. Right. He said, you must leave my house immediately. At the age of 15? Yes, at the age of 15. Hello. So I began to live in the houses of other young Americans. Yes. Uh, people who were in general influenced by Marxism. Right. And I stayed in this condition for almost four years. Yes. After one year of being away from my father, however, I did return for a rather interesting experience yes. because I tried to make a personal peace with him. Right. Right. Leaving politics aside, right. as my father, right. I still had emotional feelings. You, 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 yes. So, much, yes. so I went to him and I spoke with him, but in the middle of the conversation, as I spoke to him alone in his bedroom, right. as he was standing in front of me, he said, oh my God, and he fell dead like a tree. Backward. No, to the side. Yes. With the words, oh my God, he fell like a tree that's been cut at the base. Oh, and his whole life. Right. However, as an atheist myself, I accepted it as right. coincidence right. or right. the natural course Some of it. Some habit. Yes, or perhaps a habit. Yes. Anyway, after uh, four or five years as a Marxist, I was uh, 19 approaching my 20th yes. birthday. Yes. And I was at a gathering, at actually what might be described in the West as a party, uh -huh. uh, at the house of one black American friend named Homer Fleetwood. He had been a Vietnam veteran, yes. and he was somewhat uh, politically aware. Yes. And at this party, we were drinking, mm -hmm. of course, scotch and whiskey, beer, whatever was available. Right. And, uh, and uh, at, the, at the party, I was able to meet... Uh, I began a conversation with one African gentleman. Now, this was in Boston, Massachusetts. So there were many foreign students at the house. There were many people from different places. And one of the men at the party was uh, from Senegal, from Dakar. He was dressed in a, in a suit. Yes. And he was clean shaven. Uh, and uh, it turned out later that actually his father's name was Omar, his mother's name was Aisha, but he had been given an a African name of Injaga Sise. So I. Injaga Sise. Injaga Sise. So I think it, it has some meaning. In, in his language, it means cat, like Assad in Arabic. It means lion or, or, or cat, like, like the name Assad in Arabic. Right, right. But uh, I, I didn't, so I didn't make any uh, association that he would be Muslim or anything to this effect. Right. And uh, he looked very European in, in appearance. Right. And as it turned out, you mean in his out the clothing, in his clothing and, and his appearance, right? He seemed very European. Yes. And as it turned out, he had actually studied Marxist theory and political science at the Sorbonne in Paris right. for six years before I had met this right. party. Right. So you might say that Allah sent him like a miftah, like a key yes. to open my heart. Allah was good. Because his. In his, in his, his knowledge of Marxism was from books. Right. right. And it was great, yes. a great knowledge. Yes. But mine was only emotional. Right. And since his studying in Paris, he had returned to the Dean of Islam, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. having found no consistency in the behavior of Marxists. Right. And no akhlaq, no true brotherhood among right. Marxist friends. Right. 
So at this particular party, I had no idea of any of this information. All I knew is that this was an African right. studying at MIT University, right. an intellectual from Africa. Right. And he addressed me and he said, you know, Henry Kissinger, uh -huh. this uh, American Zionist diplomat of yours, he's causing as many troubles uh -huh. in Africa and the third world. Uh -huh. And he said, you must make some sort of an effort as an American. Right. You must be responsible and try to help educate him and get him under control. Right. And I, at that point in my life, said to him, I said, uh, these type of people, they don't listen to words. Right. So you must right. answer them only with bullets. Uh -huh. If you shoot him, this is the way to do it. Right. Words won't help. Right. And he said to me, Injaga said to me, he said, you're a very unusual American. Uh -huh. He said, I must come to your house and visit. I uh -huh. said, please, uh -huh. anytime. Come visit yes. anytime. Yes. So after one week, I was very surprised because he showed up at my front door and he came and spoke to me only political discussion. Uh -huh. I offered him one cigarette and he smoked with me. Uh -huh. And the discussion was very intense and he was very aware of things that I had never even considered in terms right. of political science. Right. So I began to respect him greatly but because his knowledge not... was above mine. Right. But he was a secret agent for Allah, you could say. For Allah. For Allah. Yes. He was Allah's secret agent and yes. very intelligent. Yes. And not once in the conversation did he mention Islam or Quran or the word Allah or Muhammad. Right, right. Because he knew if he had done that, I would have chased him right out of right, my house. Right, right. Your friendship would have been finished broken, yeah. initially. Right. But he only talked to me about political knowledge, which was above mine, until I respected him very much. Right. And after that first conversation, I said, this is a very knowledgeable Marxist from West Africa. Right. I must study with him. I must even hum be willing to humble myself. Right, right. Because his knowledge is above mine. Right. And if I don't, I may miss something. Right. So, uh, he came again after a week. Yes. And it, as, as the first time, I again offered him a cigarette. Yes. And he refused it. And I felt socially uncomfortable. So right. I said, why did you take it the first time this time? Is something the matter? You refused my cigarette today. You know, this psychology, let yeah. me tell you, you know, this psychology is given to us in the Holy Quran. When those angels came to Hazrat Ibrahim, you know, to give him the good news yes. about the brother of Sam. Exactly. Right. Now, he had prepared that battered car. Yes. You know, for the guests. For the guests. And when they sat at the table, you know, he says, Bismillah, get started. And his other guests started, but the angels wouldn't put their hands into the food. So Hazrat Ibrahim Ali Salam, according to the Holy Quran, got terrified. He said, look, these people must be intending some harm. You know, when a man comes to your house, sits at the table, and refuses, and refuses to be hospitality. Yes. So it worried me in this he, way. Exactly. Exactly. He hit the nail on the, the head. The angel said, he said, look, we are the angels of the Lord, and we do not eat. Yeah. That is the reason. This food here, physical sustenance is not for us. They get their spiritual food from God. Masha Allah. Masha Allah. So that type of an analogy happened in your life. Exactly. Yeah. And so at that point he said to me, he said, you know, I'm not like you. I right. can take the cigarette or I can leave it. Right. But you, you're a slave of the cigarette. Right. You must have it right. to maintain your peace of mind. Right. So I thought that this personal, this discussion of personal politics was very interesting. Discussion right. of personal politics. And uh, again, he continued to have with me strictly a, a discussion of political science. Right. And it wasn't until the third visit yes. that something really interesting began to happen. Because right. in the middle of the third visit, after another week, right. he came and began to speak with me more political talk. Right. And he said to me, look, Brezhnev, the leader of the Soviet Union, yes. is a collector of fancy automobiles. Uh -huh. he has, yes, he has Ferraris, right. Cadillacs, uh -huh. Mercedes-Benz, uh -huh. Rolls-Royce. Uh -huh. Is this... Is he really following the example of proletarian uh -huh. brotherhood? Right. And I said, no, he is a, a hypocrite. He right. is also a lunatic. Right. So he began the discussion, and it was really interesting me very much. But in the middle of our discussion, uh -huh. he said, excuse me, uh -huh. may I go upstairs and use your bathroom, uh -huh. and your washroom facility? Uh -huh. And I uh -huh. said, please, Jagger, help yourself right. go upstairs. Right. But after a few minutes, uh -huh. I began to hear... Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes. And the I knew... The azan. Yes, the azan. the azan. And from Hollywood, or from wherever I picked it up, right. I knew that this was Islamic religion. Right. Islamic deen. Right. And I was very disturbed. Right. Of course. <laughs> On top of your head. On top of my head. Yeah. And I said, how can this man, so as intelligent as this man, yes. be involved in such childish activity right. as this right. praying in religion? Right. 
And when he walked down the stairs, I confronted him at the bottom of the stairs. Uh -huh. And I said, my friend, you are really wasting your time. Right. I heard what you're doing upstairs. Right. He's praying or something. Right. And you must stop this. It's garbage immediately. Please stop praying. <laughs> I said to him, how can a man so intelligent as yourself be wasting your time like this with prayers? Yeah. When you know better, right. and you, you know, to know, you to know, and you better. ought to know better, and you should know that all religion is the opiate, right. the opium of the people. Right. How can you be praying? And I said, your mother in right. Africa must have brainwashed you. Yes, yes. But even that is not an excuse, because right. a man so intelligent as yourself has no excuse to be brainwashed right. by an old woman. Right. Right. I said, how can you be doing this? Right. And I said, not only that, right. you are very rude, right. because I said. If you had good manners with me, right. you wouldn't have convinced me that you're a truthful and a sincere Marxist, right, right. and then pulled out of the bag at the last moment that you're involved in some idiotic religion. <laughs> I said, this is very de deceptive of you, right. and not straightforward. Right. And I looked into his eyes at this moment, uh -huh. and he was very peaceful, yes. very relaxed. Uh -huh. And he hadn't said nothing. Yes. You said nothing. Yes. As <laughs> I had attacked him. Right. Almost as harshly as Omar al Khattab, the right. famous Sahaba, had attacked his sister and his brother-in-law. And his brother-in-law, but my friend Injago was completely relaxed. Right. And he said to me, he said, "Look, he said, I know you, uh -huh. but you don't know me. Mm -hmm. He said, I see inside you, I see your button, but you don't even see me on the outside. You don't see my daughter. You're yes. a blind man." I said. No, it's not me who's blind. It's you who are blind, and on top of that, you're also crazy. Right. And I was very rude to him. But he very peacefully bowed to me, and we were standing near the front door of my house, and he left without a word. Right. So after he left, I thought to myself, and I said, this is a very nice man, right. very intelligent man, right. but he has many emotional problems, perhaps. Right. Something has forced him right. towards this religion and of Islam, and something's forced him into prayers. Right. Maybe a human weakness. Right. Maybe the fact that it's part of his culture and he hasn't right. been able to weed out these these elements of Islamic culture in his Senegalese personality. Right. But perhaps if I stay his friend, slowly, slowly I can help him with his sickness of right. Islam right. and stop him from praying and right. take him out right. from the company of those who are involved in this nonsense right. and help him and purify him to be a true Marxist again. Oh, great. Yes. So. Uh, the problem was, is that after that, uh, you might say that my intentions were very good with the knowledge I had, because I wanted to help him according right, to my knowledge. Right, right, right. So Allah saw my condition and saw that with the knowledge I had, I wanted to do the best thing possible. So He rewarded me, Allah, Tala, He rewarded me for my intentions. And then the next meeting I had with this in Jagat Sisei, Sisei, He stopped all conversation of politics completely right. and he simply began to give me arguments from the Quran yes. without me knowing that this is Quran uh -huh. he said to me you have eyes in your head uh -huh. and you see uh -huh. have you ever doubted for the smallest instant mm -hmm. that there's one more seeing than you that there's al-basir he said you you think and you have intelligence uh -huh. you have aqua have you ever doubted for the smallest moment that there's an intelligence greater than yours uh -huh. and then he began to tell me that in all of human history yes. there's been few human beings right. their words are consistent with their actions Right. He began to speak of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how, when he's the ruler of Arabia, right. the Amir of Arabia, right. the Khalifa of Arabia, right. he was sitting on the floor and eating dates with the people and leading a very consistent life. Right. So after that discussion, I said to myself, right. uh, if I don't study something of Islam, right. not only will I not be able to help this man out, but he will even get me confused. <laughs> and I will lose my way. Right. So I, he never told me, you read Quran or do this or do that. He was much more subtle in his approach. And, right. it, and with some individuals, this is necessary. Right. Because but maybe uh, there could, could be another factor. That is, that he knew that he'll be beating you again and again. Let's say it was the only, only opportunity. Uh, uh, opportunity, like in the QE2. Yes. So look, within a day or two, you'll be getting off or he'll be getting off. And now then he'll have to start doing uh, the job. Yes, and more speed in up fashion. Up fashion. Yeah, exactly. But he had time with me, so he didn't even say to me, you read this or read that. Right. He simply left. And at the end of this conversation, this Islamic conversation, yes. I said to myself, if I don't study something in Islam, not only will I not be able to help him out, but I myself will be getting confused. <laughs> because he's very intelligent. Right. I must be aware of it. Right. He's a very aggressive uh, 
in this way. In the old way, yes, militant in his beliefs. And he's a very tricky, because I saw before how he, he's deceived me. So I said, I myself will go to the library and I will read the Quran, because I, I knew from past experience, from, from political study, that this is the book of all the Muslims. Right. So I went to the library in the United States, in Boston, and I checked out a copy of the Quran, English interpretation of the Quran, right. Right. Uh, that was done by one non-Muslim, and yes. it, his name was Sale, and it was a very bad interpretation of the oh, Quran. Oh, he was a great and allowed enemy yeah, of Islam. Islam. And it was a very bad interpretation of the Quran, sure. very unclear. And I returned to my house, and uh, actually I locked myself in one of the rooms of the house because I was living in the company of other Marxists, right, right. and I didn't want to be found out that I was even studying these right, right, books. Right, right. And I began to read the Quran, this very uh, distorted interpretation by a non-Muslim. Right. And about halfway through the Quran, I began to get very disturbed. Yes. My heart was very disturbed. Yes. I had never read the Bible before, as I told you, right. and Fortunately, I think for me, I went directly, Allah took me directly to the Quran. Right. Even and from an enemy. Even from an enemy's view. point of view, it yeah. sunk deeply into my heart. Right. And the arguments of the Quran cannot be underestimated. Allah. Because in the Quran, Allah implies, because his words can only really be recited in Arabic, but the meaning for all those of you who speak English is he said, I created you from a drop of sperm. Right. Yet you stand in front of me an open enemy. Love and he says, if all, if, if all the trees on earth were pens, yeah. and the ocean were full of ink, and seven more oceans behind it were full of ink, still my words would go on and on forever. So I realized that this was a very serious book. And it was not just a book of paper, right. but also a book of light, and a book of infinite meaning. Right. And I began to get very agitated yes. and confused, yes. to the point of tears. Yes. And I began to cry. Yes. And I tried to call my Muslim friend on the phone. Right. And he was away for three weeks for a vacation. Oh, yes. So Allah arranged my, my state was still very miserable. Right. I had no one to seek comfort right. but Allah himself. Right. And it was as if I was in jail uh -huh. at that moment. Uh -huh. And I said to myself, although I was talking to my Lord without realizing it still right. at that point, right. I said, my God, all these years, as my father said before he died, I said, my God, all these years I've been deceived, right. and I have to admit my mistake. Yes. But it's very difficult. I said, 20 years is a long, long, time. long time. And I said, you know, I believe in Allah. Allah, I said, I believe in you. Yes. And it was a big moment, and a moment almost like that that a woman has when she gives birth. Right. Because it was painful, right. it was full of joy and full of pain and, and, and sadness and tears yes. and blood right. all in the same moment right. and, and yet I was very happy right. but as I began to read this distorted version of the Quran I said to I said this cannot really all be from Allah because I didn't understand well the history of the Prophet Muhammad oh. yes. and one thing I'd like to point out you know yes. Yes. from my perspective after having been Muslim in the United States right. in the United States for 10 years right. is just that an understanding of the history of the Prophet is almost essential to an understanding of the Quran. Right. And this is one of the weaknesses up to this point in making da'wah in the United States. Yes. Because although there are adequate interpretations of Quran available, right. the best histories of the Prophet Muhammad are very difficult to obtain right. and are, or, or unavailable. Right. So this is something in the effort of da'wah which must be looked into. One of the best is done, I believe, by Martin Ling, yeah. uh, otherwise known as Abu Bakr Sirajuddin, yes. who is an English Muslim, and it's available, but for $25. Yes. So this book needs to be made available at a lower price. No. Yes. But anyway, I, 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 I didn't believe in the whole Quran. I believe part of it's from Allah and right. part of it was not. Right. I couldn't understand the historical parts. Right. But some of this I said, yes, this is the word of God. Right. This is the word of Allah. Right. Other part I was unsure because of the bad interpretation right. and my lack of knowledge of history. But at a certain point, in, when I was reading uh, the surah, the believers, surah al-Mu'mineen, Allah said in this particular chapter of the Quran that those who accept, those who trust, in the Quran, they, among other things, they established prayer. Yes. And I was confused, and I was agitated, and I said, you know, Allah, I believe in you so much. Yes. I said, I'm actually going to try to pray. Right. But I said, you know, this is going to be very difficult for me, yes. because I never pray. prayed before. Pray. So please be patient with me, and try to help me, strengthen me, because I almost, even though I believe in you, I almost hate to do this. Right. Right. <laughs> so, 
Again, I had no companion. And actually, my first salat was between me and Allah. There was no advice and no person there. And I knew from, again, from Hollywood or from or from some, somewhere, yeah. Allah only knows that the Muslimin, they, they prayed, mm -hmm. bowing down. Yeah. Falling to the ground. Yes, exactly. So I fell into sujood, I fell into prostration, my head, my knees on the ground and my forehead on the ground, like a baby, right. facing Allah knows only which way, but it certainly wasn't the Qibla, I found out later. It doesn't matter because my heart was directed towards him. So he, he is, he is Al-Hadi and Rashid, and so, inshallah, that prayer was guided all the way to him. But at that moment, I felt some peace and some salamat, the same way that all Muslimin, after the prayer, they feel the malaika descend, even if they don't see with their, with the eye of their heart or their physical eye, still they feel the companionship of the angels, and they feel the peace that, that the, the five Muslim prayers bring to them. And I began on that first prayer even to feel tranquility and right. peace right. and reassurance from Allah and strength. And I was very, very much relieved. Right. And after one day or two days, I called again my friend in right. Jagasisi. Right. Right. And I said, you've been away for a long time. Yes. I said, I've been doing some reading. Uh -huh. He said, what did you read? Uh -huh. I said, I read Quran. Uh -huh. He laughed and he said, oh, I think you're at this point like a ripe fruit on the tree ready to fall. Uh -huh. I, said, I see your condition. You're, 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 you must be very agitated and confused. I said, you, re you read my condition right. clearly from a distance. Mashallah. I said, I'm confused, but I'm not confused. I said, I must be a Muslim. I must accept Islam. Right. He said, please, yes. take your time. Uh -huh. Don't rush into uh -huh. this decision. Uh -huh. He said, because Allah said in Quran, He said to me, there's no compulsion in life right. transaction. Right. The right way is clear from the wrong way. Right. So He said to me, you know, Islam and being a Muslim is a serious decision. So you must take your time so that you must remember once you do it, you can never return. Yes. You have to be very serious about it and take your time and don't rush into anything. Right, right. Just like a marriage, right. you have to know that right. man or that woman well right. before you take the you plan. Them out. Yeah. Right. And so uh, I spent a couple of weeks studying with him and speaking with him. And after these two weeks, we went to the mosque in the United States. Where there, in Boston? In Boston, where there were only a few Muslims present. Yes. And I said the Shahada there with them. And since that time, Allah has continued to guide me. So, this is my history, never before recorded. And if it's a benefit to any of the Muslimin or any of those who are interested in Islam, I'm happy. How did you get onto this QE2 tour? And when? Well, uh, I entered the ship uh, in Los Angeles right. for the purpose of experiencing all parts of Western society. Right. Because Allah has said in the Quran to travel right. and see my ayats. Yes. And he's and see my he symbols. He says, Kul siru fil ard. He said, travel through the earth and see from Zuru and see. Exactly. What has happened to those before you? It means in history, people, nations have been destroyed for what? Like the people of uh, Luth alayhi salam. Yes. People of Lord. Solomon and Gomorrah. The people of Noah. Yes. And you see what has happened to in the past in the uh, uh, archaeological researches that you can make. Like in Mohanjidaro and Sindh, Taxila, Avtata, Tindi. When you go and see these things, then you realize there were mighty people living on this earth long before Hitler and Mussolini. Yes. And civilizations, you know, building monuments they had put up. Wow. What happened to them? Where are they? So in other words, now this is a lesson Allah Baritala wants us to imbibe by travel. So if we travel with that intention, it's also an act of virtue, blessing, sawa. Yes. It's a religious duty yes. with that idea. Not just to say, look, I'm going to go to Paris and have a jolly good time, or go to Los no. Angeles or France. France no, not at all. Not, that not at all. Yes. So far on this trip, I visited the Muslimin in Bali, in Thailand, yes. where I even had doubts there were Muslimin. Right. Can you tell us something about these uh, Muslim habitations, you know, people, communities, like in Bali? Well, of course, in Bali, you know, it's one of the islands. Bali is one of the Indonesian islands. Exactly. It's right. one of the Indonesian mm -hmm. islands. And as, as some of the listeners to this conversation may realize, uh, Indonesia has one of the largest population of Muslims in the world in many countries, if not the largest. Reputed to be. Yes. 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 And yet, the island of Bali is, uh, is mostly, uh, the population is mostly Hindu. 
A Buddhist. I don't think no, I'm Hindu. 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 Yeah, actually, yeah. Hindu. Yes, yes. With with a very uh, small proportion of uh, Muslims there. Right. Yet the the relationship between uh, Muslim and Hindu in Bali is not like that which you would find in India. Right. It's a much more relaxed relationship. Right. And uh, although the Muslims are in minority in the island, right. they are majority throughout the country. Right. So in the Hindu shops, for example, right. you see photographs of the Muslim leaders uh -huh. of the whole country. Right. And they respect Islam very much Mashallah. in an unusual way. Yeah. So it's a very different situation. But there I, I landed in Padang Bai, in Bali, and uh, I went to the mosque there. Yes. And uh, all the little children gathered around, and they were very surprised to see me because they rarely receive a visitor from outside, right, right, right. From outside of Indonesia. Right. And they were going to Very unusual for them. Very so we exchanged address, and hopefully there will be some communication. Yes. You know. Then you visit to Thailand? Then also in Thailand, uh, uh, I stopped at uh, Pattaya, Pattaya. Pattaya, which is one of the worst uh, red light districts of prostitution in the world. Astaghfirullah. Which actually was created, which actually was created by the American military when they had their soldiers in Vietnam, right. and they sent them on leave. They would send them. They created the city of Pattaya uh -huh. as a district of prostitution. Is it some far from Bangkok? Or it's it about it's Bangkok? A, no, it's about t two hours from Bangkok on the beach, oh. and it's one of the most outrageously uh, crude places in the world. But. As I walked, I arrived there in the morning yes. when things had not yet reached their peak. Your ship was not there. Right? The, yes, ship the, ship had, the ship had har harbored at Pattaya, oh. at this red light district. Right. And we took a not launch. Not in Bangkok. I not in Bangkok, no. And we took a small launch into the shore. Right. And I walked through the streets in the morning yes. before things had really reached their worst right. state. At 10 in the morning, yeah. and I, I walked and I saw the condition of things, how horrible really it could be. Right. Because of, of everything I've seen in the United States, even this red light district was really more outrageous the, than, the more than anything I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> and I was walking towards the outskirts of the town, yeah. and I had no idea that there were Muslimin in this area. Right. I thought right. they were all down near the Malaysian border. Right. And right. here we were over on the, the east coast of Thailand, right. near right. Cambodia. Right. And I had no idea, but I was walking towards the outskirts of the city, right. and there I saw two men or with oriental faces yes. who were Muslim. Right. I could identify them as Muslim, right. but they, they looked Thai. Right. Well, did they have anything on the head? Yes, they had, were wearing Muslim style of hat, and right. I'm wearing them. Right. Takia. And I said, right. I said, Salaam Alaikum. And they said, Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And they said, Come to our house. And Open Sisan. Yeah. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan wa Sahlan. They took me to their house. Yes. And it was raised on wooden stilts, yeah. on a wooden floor. And there was the grandmother and the father and all the grandchildren and many people of the family. Right. And, and the names of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu were on the wall. Yes. And I was really quite impressed and quite surprised. Yes. Because also they had a strange custom, which yes. I've never seen anywhere else in the Muslim world. Yes. And that is that they had the names of Allah and Muhammad and, and verses from Quran tattooed with ink into their skin. Yes. And I think that on this, the bodies. On the bodies. And yes. I think that this custom is not exactly something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised. True. But out of devotion they have right. done this. Right. And perhaps ignorance right. that, that he that he hasn't forbidden this. Right. So it was an act for them of love. And right. I didn't mention it to them. Right. Right. But uh, then uh, they invited me to eat with them. Right. And I expected a small meal because the house was a very simple place. Right. But they brought me tray after tray of food. Uh -huh. I said, what is this? Uh -huh. And they said, one of our daughters is married to a man from Bahrain. Right. And they've just had a child. Right. You've come late right. to the ceremony of the baby. Right. And this is leftover food we're serving you. Right. So later, we went to the masjid there in Thailand, yes. to the mosque, and we prayed. And in the evening, they said, come. We will show you our, see, our city. Yes. No matter how evil it may be, right. we are going to take you on an Islamic tour of the uh -huh. red light district. <laughs> And now, I, what would that mean? Islamic tour of the red like this? Well, it, what, it, what it meant really is that they were going to show me even the worst manifestation right. of the human character. Right. So that also I could be prepared to meet our enemy. You know, because until you understand shaitan very well, right. you, you, can't, you can't give battle to him. You can't give battle to him. Right. And once your iman is very strong, right. even you change the condition of a people okay. before they change you. Because Muhammad right. said that. When you stay with the people for 40 days, right. either you become like them right. or they like you. Right, right. And so when your iman is strong by Allah's 
Even by Allah's permission, yeah. truly, you can walk into a city like that yes. and change the hearts of people, right. which we did because we met some Arab boys there who were on vacation right. to make some mischief, right. and we got them into a conversation about Islam, right. and they were practically in tears. Yes. So this is possible. Allah makes all things possible. Masha. 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 And, uh, you see, uh, you did mention casually when we met yes. that uh, around where you live in the America, mm. There is an Indian community, uh, the Red Indians, what we are made to call them, the Red Indians. Yes. And this Indian community seems to be behaving in an Islamic way. In you some know? ways this is true. So if yeah. you can tell us something about that kind of community and whether anything can be done to bring them towards Islam. Exactly. Well, I live in the city of Taos, New Mexico. Taos, T-A-O-S. Exactly. It sounds like... Uh, that was sound like Chinese or something. It's an unusual word. Yes. And uh, New Mexico is the state, of course, between Arizona and Texas. Yes. And Taos is a very unique city yes. in the sense that it, it, in, in, in our city, about two kilometers from my house, yes. is the oldest inhabited apartment building in the United States. Oldest inhabited apartment? Apartment, apartment building, building in the United States, yeah. 800 years old. Yeah. So that goes back way before Columbus. Right. Made of mud bricks, right. three stories high. Right. It's inhabited by the Tiwa Indian tribe. Tiwa. 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 Yes. And uh, of course, uh, the the Tiwa tribe has maintained their traditional life yes. up to the present moment in history. So in the village, the tribal chiefs. Yes. In the old part of the village, the tribal chiefs are very conservative. Yes. There's no electricity, uh -huh. no television, yes. even in some places, no running water. Yes. And still their, bed, their bread is baked in, 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 in mud ovens. Right, right. And their life is, is, is traditional by choice. Right. Must be understood as not by force. Yes. And also, uh, their, 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 their life transaction with their creator is very unique. Yes. And although it's not the place of someone outside their tribe to understand deeply their traditions, yes. very briefly, I can say that uh, that they believe very strongly in the Creator. Right. But the knowledge of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has not been conveyed to them. Right. And I would say that the message of Jesus has been conveyed in a distorted way. Right. So many of them are clinging very strongly to the original deen which Allah has given to that their specific tribe and if you study the Quran you say that you you see that in the beginning each gathering of people was given a form of Islam or a form of deen a revelation to suit their own specific situation and so the Tiwa tribe is still clinging very strongly to this original teaching which has been revealed over the years for their benefit and there are very natural people living very close to the land. They still hunt in the mountains. They yes. still gather their own firewood yes. and many of these things. And even some American tourists, yes. some white American tourists or foreign tourists who come there right. are a little bit taken aback right. because on the back of some of the Indian pickup trucks you will right. see a bumper sticker uh. that says, for example, Custer, die for your sins. Right, No, Custer, the Custer. American general who, who attacked and was killed by the Indian Sioux tribe. Oh. Custer, the famous Amer American general who, who died oh. fighting the Indians. Right. Custer died for your sins. Right. So the, the Indians are there in my city are militant, I would say, in an intelligent way. Yes. And they understand their position yes. and their rights in the area. So there are fascinating and, and, and very generous people. Do they speak English? They speak English as well as a, as well as traditional language, and some of them also speak Spanish. Yes. But uh, the the point is, is that they're living in a way very close to Allah. Right. So in order to benefit uh, from Islamic discussion, right. they must see a very very truthful Islamic example. Yes. yes. And because of the relationship between the European Americans and the Indians, right. I have never felt it's my place to try to invite them strongly to Islam. Right. Because it has to come from someone who, uh, who, is, who is not a part of this uh, conflict. Right. And right. just because of who I am, even though I am Muslim, right. still my ancestors right. have right. taken place with them in right. this conflict and they must hear it from someone who is detached completely right. from this right. 
very old cartoon. Yes, like uh, uh, a brown Indian going to the red Indian. Exactly. A brown man going to the red man, instead of a white man going to the, to the red man. You see, now, when you describe this community, you know, it being, brings to mind the Quranic verse, where Allah tells us that every nation has had a guide. So, in min ummatin illa qada, and there never was a people without a warner having been sent amongst them. And again the Quran repeats in another place, it says, well, and to every nation a guide. This is Allah's promise, that this is a, he is not partial towards his creatures, that he is going to pick up only one tribe out of the millions of tribes of the earth for his special spiritual favors. Yes. And he's going to neglect the rest of mankind. Each, according to his capacity and understanding, was given guidance. Exactly. It is for us to bring them to a greater guidance, see, the perfecter guidance. See? Because for their needs, Allah gave them, maybe 2,000 years ago. And because they had no written language, I take it, I don't know if they have a written language no. at all. They have no written language, so they can't remember the names of the prophets. Perhaps, see? yes. You know, the people who guided them, they might say, you know, like my our own people in South Africa here. Yeah. We are the Zulus. Long before the white man touched the shores of this country, they believed in God Almighty, the African. Say the Zulu. He calls God Almighty Mvelingangi. Mvelingangi is for God Almighty. It's like Wallahu Ghani. Yes. Wallahu Ghani for God Almighty. And if you ask an African, he says, What is this Mvelingangi? What is this? He says, Ah, Mnimzan. He tells us in his own native language, The sir, he is Umoya, Wimlele. He is a pure and holy spirit. Agazali and Afudi Agazalwanga. And he does not beget and is not begotten. And there is nothing like unto him. You know what he's doing? He's actually giving us that paraphrase of Surah Al uh, Ikhlas. Allah. Yes, He's actually Quran. as if he has read the Quran and as if he had memorized the meaning in his own language. Very interesting. But now, the trouble with us is the Muslims. We are not going out to share. We have to open up doors, you know, yes. to enable us to have communication with them. And one another interesting point, coming from this word Umfeling Kake, you have a word like that in America, among the Red Indians. You see, when I came to your country in 1977, yes. uh, your airways, among the airways you see, there's TWA and uh, what are PM and what and what not. Among them there is one airways called Allegheny. Yes. Allegheny. Exactly. Right. Spelled like A L L E G A N Y. Allegheny. I know this earlier. Right. So I went to this Allegheny counter and I'm asking them, what is Allegheny? You know, where did you get the word Allegheny from? Because it sounded to me like, Wallahu Ghani. Allahu Ghani. Yes. You see, so I'm asking, what is Allegheny? So they say, they, we have a mountain here in America and the Red Indians named it Allegheny. So from that Allegheny mountain comes the word Allegheny Airways. Yes. So I said, you know, in, in Arabic, Allegheny means Allah is rich. As the Quran says, Wallahu Ghani, wa antumul fuqara. So Allah is rich and you are all poor beggars. Yes. So I said, you know, it is so easy to find ways and means of communicating. Somehow get through to these people and say, look, the teachings, whatever ideas they have, I'm sure, their concept, if it's not spot, the Red Indians I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. There will be Islamic concept of God Almighty. And say, so, look, this is our belief. Yes, one thing about the Tiwa tribe and, and many of the other, I think, Indian tribes in the United States is that they do have a more concrete concept of the unity of the Creator. Right. And so the, the, the idea of Trinity yes. is unacceptable to many of them. Right. Because they uh, appreciate the, 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 the symbols of God and the meaning of God in the mountains, right. in their own cells, right. which is what Allah in the Quran indicates when He right. says, when he implied in the Quran, Allah implied in the Quran, I will show you my ayats, my right. symbols, my in the horizons right. and in your own self, right. so you are certain that this is the truth. Right. And so they, 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 all, human, all human tribes and people were created in the fitra of Allah, right. meaning reflecting right. the attributes right. of the Creator, right. Right. being naturally generous, right. naturally brave, right. naturally uh, uh, wise. Right. Right. And so in that sense, uh, because, let's say, the, some of the Indian tribes in the United States have clung to a traditional lifestyle yes. and to simplicity, yes. this is a big part of the Sunnah, of the life transaction of our Prophet right. Muhammad, was simplicity. Right. So even if you lead a simple life, right. 
and you, you, you don't understand the Quran, still you're putting some of it into practice without knowing it. Right. And this is why some of my Arab brothers in the Middle East, they said to me, yeah. if you want to understand Islam better, right. you must study more Arabic language. Yes. And I said, yes, this is a good point you're right. making to me. Right. Right. I said, because the Quran and the, the, the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad are in mm -hmm. Arabic language. Yes. But, I said also, if you want to understand your language, I said right, to them, yeah. your Arabic language, you must understand the meaning of the Quran. Right. Because reading, being fluent in Arabic is no guarantee of understanding. That's true. That's but true. the understanding comes from implementing right. and practicing right. the injunctions right. and the commands and following the instruction contained in the Quran. Right. So that, in one sense, a, a Muslim in the middle of Yugoslavia yes. who speaks only a few words of Arabic right. may be closer by, by doing what he's been commanded to do yes. than someone who, uh, who, who has memorized the whole Quran right. and yet is not living by those words. Sure. Sure. So both is important because the Arabic language takes you to a deeper understanding, sure. but, the, but, the, but the correct behavior yes. takes you also It's there. a real test yes. of you reading and imbibing the messages. Exactly. Yes. Because Allah Allah will not be satisfied from you or from me or from any of one who's listening to this discussion with an Islam of mere outward appearance. We must be inwardly obedient as well as outwardly. So this is inshallah. And now this work of propagation you know, yes. in America, yes. uh, are there any Muslim communities you know, out to you know, go out of their way? to propagate the thing because now you have come into Islam more by accident than by design. You might say that. Divine accident. Divine accident. I mean, it was a divine plan. It is a gift from yes. him. But now, the bulk of mankind, they need a man, a person like, you know, in the time of the prophets or in the time of the different prophets, the prophets of God went out of their way to deliver the message. Yes, exactly. They didn't sit back at home and waiting for somebody, a customer to come along. See, yes. Hazrat Nuh for 900 years. Our, our Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam for 23 years, a hectic life, you know, going out, he goes to tire, he gets a beating, he comes back, and he doesn't go to sleep, he's busy in Mecca. It's a constant endeavor. Now, is there any such type of activity being carried out in Africa, in your yes. West, well, New, Mexico, New Mexico? Well, I'll, I'll speak to you about all the United States. Yes. Because uh, it's, 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 it's one, since it's one country, right. it's also one world. Right. It's right. one situation right. there throughout the United States. Right. And of course there's a considerable amount of Dawah activity and, uh, at this point in history. Yes. Uh, people trying to make the truth of Islam, putting it in the open so that people will have a choice. And I'd say among the different groups who are active, is, uh, there's, there's the, the, is the MSA, the Muslim Student Association yes. of the United States and Canada, right. who are doing a certain type of work, right. which is efficient, especially with certain types of individuals. Right. They're right. active on the university campuses yes. and with intellectuals and this right. type of people. Right. But in other departments, they are not fulfilling the need. Right. Then also there's the work of Tablighi, Jamaat al Tablighi, yes. the, the Dawa organization that's you know in, in India and Pakistan. They're right. doing uh, another job right. in the United States. Right. And quite active, I would say. Right. right. But also, uh, there are some that are not being reached completely by their efforts. Right. And I could mention also the name of, let's say, uh, one uh, man, Sheikh Asaf Durakovich, in uh, upstate New York, yes. who is based in Washington, but uh, he's the leader, you might say, the emir of one Muslim community in the upstate New York, in Waterport, New York. and. Uh, he is bringing a whole another caliber of right. people right. towards the deen right. in a very subtle way. Right. His father was a, a sheikh of Tasawuf in Yugoslavia, yes. and he understands very well the knowledge of hearts and the knowledge of the souls. Right. So he's able to to, to be a, to make very subtle dawah to people who to people who you wouldn't ordinarily think right. would come to the deen in America. Right. For example, doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. and very sophisticated. Americans. Right. And so uh, Allah is working in many unusual ways in the United States, right. but there's still a great need yes. of, of concentrating uh, and uniting the effort in an intelligent way. Right. Because uh, money is not the problem yes. in the United States, yes. but it's really being sensitive 
and intelligent when approaching the American people because they're a very wealthy people right. and a very intellectual people right. in general and you must present all sides of the story to them right. and, and, and you yourself must trust very much in the verse of the Quran which says Bismillah ar-Rahim la ikraha fi deen qatr which means in, in other words there's no compulsion in life transaction the right way is clear from here right. you must when you're making da'wah in the West, among the Americans and among the European people, show them all sides of the situation and right. trust in Allah that He will guide them to the right Inshallah. way. Inshallah. But if you approach them as children, right. saying, read only this book or look at things only this way, they will reject you. Yes. So uh, this, is, uh, this is something that if you want to bring the... the, 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 the in terms of, of, of a concerted effort, there has to be some... Uh, the, the Americans have to be approached in a very intelligent way. And this is why at this time, you know, some of us are interested in, in creating a center of Islamic and Middle Eastern studies in the United States, which is not exactly a university, yes. but it, which is a place for people who are really searching for knowledge of truth, right. not to accumulate knowledge of deen for teaching to others, but for their own hearts and souls, where they can search and detail and review the whole history and situation from every perspective, right. from Sunni perspective, from Shia perspective, from the perspective of the Sufis, right. from the perspective even of the Jews and the Christians, right. so that they can come to a sound conclusion based on knowledge. Because right. a sound conclusion based on knowledge cannot be shaken. Right. But a conclusion that's not been based on being well informed can be shaken, right. as mine was in right. Marxism, right. this man. Right. Because I didn't understand deeply enough. Right. And so, uh, with, with that in mind, it's, it's important to, to, to provide this sort of, uh, you know, complete information, make it accessible, because without that, the American people can never understand the current events in the world and can never really behave correctly in, in the world situation as diplomats, right. as uh, travelers, as businessmen, right. because until you understand the Quran, right. you cannot understand correctly the Middle Eastern situation, that is, that is true. and until you understand the Middle Eastern situation, you can understand the world situation. So the, the key is to understand Islam, and it's the duty, it's our duty as Muslimin to, 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 to convey the message as my brother, you, my brother Ahmed Bidat are making a small effort to do in a humble way. Because if we don't, we cannot put the responsibility on the Jews and the Christians. True. But we must take it on our own shoulders. First, at least we must deliver the message. Yes. Now these Bilalians, you know, they call themselves Bilalians. Yes. You know, uh, this, uh, here the name Wallace Muhammad. Exactly. These people, are they doing anything among the Negroes or what the Afro-Americans well, in the field of propagation? Yeah, really the, 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 the term that's in, you know, that, 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 that is used in the United States is really black American, right. the preferred term, you know, just for reference. Well, but, right. Yeah. Black American. Yes, I, right. think, I think that uh, they have done uh, quite a bit uh, over the years. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the largest Muslim organizations in the United States. Right. And, uh, of course, the father of Wallace D. Muhammad, you know, uh, makes a whole, uh, his history is a whole story in itself. Right. Uh, and Wallace, is, w Wallace D. Muhammad, his uh, story is a story in itself. Right. Something I don't really feel qualified to speak about in depth. But I will say that, of course, they made a positive contribution to the overall Islamic uh, situation in the United States. Uh, there's some who don't agree with uh, their views, right. and they and they have uh, their uh, and they have some views which are would be acceptable to all Muslims. Yes. And so, like any other gathering or group, we yes. must we must take what's best right. from our brother and spit out the seed. Right. Right. If I keep and company with you right. and you see something incorrect in my behavior, you must take the truthful words I said to you. But if I do something incorrect, right. you must leave that right. behind. Right. And that way you will find that the, that the correct sect, because Muhammad once said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Muslim community, yeah. there are 72 sects, I think. Yeah. That is reputed to have said that. Yes, reputed. Yeah. And of these, only one is on the right path. Yes. And I, from my own conclusions, I've come to the understanding that the one on the right path is those who truly are loving Allah, yes. no matter what company they're sitting with, yes. no matter what situation they're finding themselves yes. in. And those, those are the ones on the right path. Yes. <laughs> May Allah guide us Inshallah. all to His way. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you. We look forward to 
the opportunity of meeting you again. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to relate my story. And I ask one more favor, and that is to give my telephone number in New Mexico right. to any Muslim or non-Muslim in the world right. who would like to talk about these right. subjects with me or right. is coming to the United right. States to visit. Right. But really, please, yes. And that is, it's the following number. If you call it, you can have a word with me. Dial 505-505-705. Yes. 758-758-1500. One five. One nine. One nine. Yes. And thanks and very much. Just uh, that the first one was the code. Yes, in the, the United code. States. And that last is the number, yes. Yeah. Right. So uh, if anyone would like to have a continue conversation with me, I'm I'm Allah's servant and have nothing better to do than to sit down as I just have with my brother Ahmed and talk with you as well. But I, I want to thank Ahmed Bidad very much also because it's been a really inspirational experience also to visit Durban and the Muslimin in Durban and and this and the, and the, the the Islamic propagation center it's really it's really inspirational and has strengthened my iman my faith in Allah and his servants in this very day because in general in the world today I think the Muslimin are in the state of the brothers of Yusuf there are many who claim to be Muslim but few who are loving Allah correctly and those who are loving Allah, Allah correctly are often being put down the well and abandoned by their other brothers. And so to meet Ahmed Didat and to see the Islamic Propagation Center makes me feel happy as if I was to sit with Yusuf alayhi Because I see the brothers here loving Allah very much and that makes me very happy. So that's enough of a compliment because all praise is due to Allah. And if I compliment this man too much it's as if I was to kill him. So I don't want to... I, I want to make him cry, but not that sort of way. Shukran. Jazakallah. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.